Hi guys, welcome back. Now, why are we looking so much into palm oil stocks when there are other alternatives in the market? This, for example, is Geo Energy. It's in coal mining. And as we know, commodity prices across the board has been rising. So why not explore Geo Energy for coal mining affiliation? Or how about this? Fortress Materials in the iron ore play. Now, these two are also companies to examine, but I think the palm oil story, there are a few companies involved. It's much easier to see big industry trends. That's why for myself, I think that is the easier bet to make. In Singapore, there are five main palm oil companies. The first is Wilma. They do upstream and downstream. Golden Agri, they also do both upstream and downstream. First resources, Indo Food Agri and Bumitama Agri. I actually cover in a subsequent video which is my most preferred. So do smash on subscribe and stay tuned when it's released. So if this topic interests you, continue watching on. Today we'll be discussing big picture. I see strong earnings for each of these companies because they all release results in February. There is price to book value expansion, something that I teach on my course. And I realized that is across Golden Agri as well as Bumitama Agri. And they are also nowhere close to being stretched in terms of price to book value against historical figures. So even though it's trended up recent weeks, I still think we are not at the peak of the cycle. Do note, now this point of filming, it's 8th of March. I don't know when you're viewing this. Because commodities are a cycle. And if you view this 6 months down the road, things could look very different already. But my gut feeling is now offers an opportunity that, you know, I don't, I don't come screaming opportunity all the time also. I, I feel now is a good risk reward time. And that's why I've deployed substantial amounts of my own capital into this particular sector. I'll deep dive a bit, but let's start with the big picture overview of why commodities and why palm oil in particular. Ukraine actually produces something called sunflower seeds. This can be crushed for oil and it can be used for cooking. And the number one importer for sunflower oil is actually India. They import $3.1 billion worth and actually Ukraine is a crucial supplier. Now, I found out something about Ukraine. In the middle of Ukraine, that is a Goldilocks zone, we can term it that way, whereby it's wet, it's relatively good for planting, and that's why they have a lot of crops growing out right there. Ukraine also provides a lot of corn, as you can see over here. China depends on Ukraine for some corn, and Netherlands also depend on them for corn. But I'd like to put a discussion back to sunflower oil. This is a subsequent chart to take notice of. In the big picture of things, globally, as humankind, we consume a lot of different kinds of oil. Palm oil is the most that we consume. Second is rapeseed oil, soybean oil, and sunflower oil. Besides palm oil, the other three are softer oils. The second most edible oil that we consume is actually the purple one, sunflower oil. Let me give you some backdrop of sunflower oil. Ukraine is a key producer of it. In fact, they produce 46% of sunflower oil to the world. And guess who is number two on the list of largest producers of sunflower oil? That is Russia. Someone that the world wants to sanction and not buy their supplies. So I'll later explain, Russia is probably not too keen to sell their sunflower oil in any case. So that means 70% of total sunflower oil is off the market. And if we refer back to the chart over here, you realize that that easily constitutes to 10% total shortage of cooking oil from the world. You'll be thinking, 10%, not such a big deal. But that means also we have to all bid against each other to get 90% of all the remaining stocks. So that actually causes price pressure. The other thing to note about planting and harvesting is that you can't plant today and harvest tomorrow, correct? We all have been through science classes. We understand that. And right now, the problem of crops is not only going before this year because Ukraine farmers are unable to plant, which means next year's crops are likely going to be threatened. The short supply may be here to stay for a while. North America also produces sunflower oil, but that consumption is mainly domestic in US and in Canada. So where is India going to get its sunflower oil, you may be thinking. Great question. And that's why the next chapter, we'll talk about hoarding of commodities. Before we get to this chapter, I invite you to smash the like button. It's taking our team hours to prepare this presentation for you. And hopefully, 
we've taken already some suggestions I've made to invest some parts of your wealth into commodity ideas. That, in my opinion, is the best defense. We can go down to the markets and complain all day that food prices are going up. Or we can be smart by investing into commodity players right now to hedge ourselves and as well as to profit from supply-demand imbalances. I've also seen before this question. Commodity prices cause inflation, not the other way around, which means inflation does not cause increment in commodity prices. But that may or may not be true because if you think from a different perspective, this is how things work. You know, producer countries are usually developing economies, correct? Indonesia, Brazil, Ukraine. And in their fight for their own domestic inflation, they also resort to such things, which is to hoard their own products to sell locally more to prevent inflation from food from coming too much into their own markets. That is why Argentina in December 2021 has kept its own corn and wheat exports. Russia, they've also ramped up their wheat export restriction. And that's also to maintain its domestic supply. Now, every country is thinking about the same thing. Why should I sell to the world when I myself, the inflation is so heavy, I need to make sure that my people get enough supply to drive that food inflation down. And when they are unable to supply the world, we have to all bid. Because the rest of the developer world has money, but no crops. Now basically anything that is edible, in my opinion, is just going to be bidded up. Simply because the crunch takes time to resolve. I do understand, when sunflower oil is not there, people would change to the other oils, which is soybean oil, canola oil, and more importantly, palm oil. And that's why we are going to discuss a bit deeper on palm oil. But before we get things started, let me show you something on Indonesia's grand plans. President Jokowi has mentioned that he plans to curb exports fully one day. That could help domestic inflation for one. And secondly, or more importantly, the goal is to make Indonesia not just an exporter of, of raw commodities, but processed commodities, whereby they move up the value chain, create more jobs beyond just farming. So that is actually a very noble drive, but it may or may not come true because the world will put pressure on Indonesia itself. India has actually asked Indonesia to raise the palm oil supply because they are now unable to get sunflower oil, correct? Just like I mentioned, India depends a lot on Ukraine for sunflower oil. In fact, India has previously said it wants to slowly cut back on palm oil, but right now, it has to go back into a source where it wanted to cut originally. India has even reduced its tax for crude palm oil imports from 7.5% to 5%. And India is just an example whereby consumers right now need to look for alternative sources and palm oil fits the bill. The shortage of sunflower oil cannot be resolved. People still need to cook, people still need to fry food. And if you agree with me that this trend might persist for a while, smash the like button. Now let's touch on a very important point, which is, has the palm oil rally been too excessive? Are there still more rooms for it to appreciate? If you look at this chart over here from first resources, you realize that they did a record performance with an average CPO price of about 1,179 US dollars. That works to be about 4,900 ringgit. But if you see the recent prices for CPO, you realize that it's hovering past 5,000, even past 6,000 already. So as long as prices are above 5,000, palm oil companies will see new record profits again for this year. If you look at this chart over here, you see something. That crude palm oil, which is CPO prices, have actually increased by more than 20% just in the last one year. At an all-time high right now, the first thought is it seems a bit scary to enter. But I've always suggested, we need to understand what is the dynamics of things. The squeeze, in my opinion, is real. That's why I'm doing a lot more commodity-related videos right now. To share with you, all-time high does not mean we need to stay out for sure. Because if we get squeezed, it shoots up in a very quick span of time. Nothing stays indefinitely high. As a humankind, we know how to find replacements, we know how to solve bottlenecks, but that bottleneck cannot be solved for at least a few months in my opinion. China has actually mentioned that they released some of its veg oil inventory so that more supply can come in in second half 2022. But what about from now to June? Is there a window whereby crude palm oil could get squeezed in terms of prices? I'm trying to suggest so. Another angle look at is our agricultural companies right now. On a price earnings perspective, it's actually much cheaper than for example corn producers listed in US. One example is Archer Daniels Midland. You can check it out with a ticker ADM. I believe all sectors of food will just trend up. And the case to make now is to hedge. 
and buy when the squeeze is still ongoing not when three months later when prices of these stocks start to come down then you enter then that's past the peak already so think very carefully whether my suggestion makes sense in a subsequent video i'll be sharing with you many of our palm oil companies are actually raising their dividends that is a good sign golden agri has more than tripled its dividend from 2020 to 2021 they are now pledging 1.605 singapore cents per share in dividend that easily works out to be five percent dividend yield the interesting part is golden agri is not the only one raising dividends which is why i'm very optimistic about the near-term prospects of palm oil companies and i've actually prepared the right material to share with you in a subsequent video smash the subscribe get notified when it's released leave any questions you have in the comment sections and i'll see you in the next video take care and goodbye